All right. Now, to finally conclude this very excellent argument here, <laughs> is that positions that they get paid to do good jobs, which is pretty much a very good incentive. Whereas money, that's great, but if you can't really, your job as a physician is to make sure you save lives, not to see how fat your wallet can get. So pretty much what you want to do is that you want to help out as many people as you can, not for the sake of getting millions and millions of dollars, but just to make sure that you can save uh, your neighbor's life or uh, someone you never knew, but in the end you'll cross roads again. Whereas you could still get an excellent pay of 200 grand, which is very good in society, even here. So, the, why my opponents said that privatization is going on in Canada is true, but in a single payer healthcare system, privatization is normal because it is there for a single payer healthcare system, it gives you the basic needs while you can still get a private sector out there for needs that aren't covered by the government. So that pretty much renders that kind of pointless. And also, when Bush uh, was paid $891,208 to pass a bill to help seniors pay their prescriptions, it sounded like a good idea except that it handed over 800 billion of our tax dollars to the drug and health insurance industry by letting the drug companies charge whatever they wanted and making the private health insurance companies the middlemen. Medicare prescription drug involved, drug improvement and insurance and modernization act of 2000, which was known as the Medicare prescription drug improvement and modernization act of 2003, which pretty much two thirds which pretty much two-thirds of seniors still pay over $2,000 in prescription, and up to this day, they still pay that amount. We're pretty much also, other references that pretty much people here are focused more on money is uh, Bill Tonson, who worked on the bill, left Congress to become the CEO of Pharma, the drug industry lobby, for a salary of $2 million a year. So pretty much, it shows that this society is influenced more by money than by quality of health care. And my other opponents claim that in 2000, 25, less than 25% of people were unhappy in Canada with their single payer health care system is irrelevant because the study that I found said that the Gallup poll in Canada in 2011, which is far more recent than the year 2000, is that 57% of the people were satisfied with their health care. Now, minor details don't really matter. What matters is that the U.S. does worse than most industrialized countries. What our system needs is a system for the people, by the people, and not for the greedy HMOs and other business people. So pretty much what we need is a single-payer health care system. Thank you.